Hello, hello. Today we're looking at a Legend Storm Spirit Players replay, playing against Shadow Friend. This will be a solo session. I'll just talk to myself. So let's go. First thing, items. Against Shadow Friend, the first thing you'll want to do, like unless you really know what you're doing, you will want a self. Most Shadow Friends will get raises at a level at level one, and they. Even the two stacks, they hurt a lot. And if he gets three stacks on you, that's that's a death sentence. So against SFs, I would always advise getting a self. And there we go, there's a self. So ignore everything I just said. It's starting, it's starting. Let's see the laning itself. Uh, one tip for any mid players that might be watching this. If you want to block the creeps, You'll want to hold whichever button you are using to center the camera on your hero. So for example, my hero is uh, number 1, so I would just double click on 1 and hold it, and this way the camera just follows my hero, which makes it way easier to black the creeps. And here the player needs to constantly adjust his camera, which eventually might lead to a creep block fail. Nevertheless, the range creep goes first, which isn't quite bad. Yep, nice deny. Now, because we know that uh, SF just used one raise, he doesn't have a middle raise, which means this ca he cannot uh, do three stacks, and this makes it sa safe for the storm to just walk up and use a remnant on both of these creeps. The ranged one and the melee one. Which is exactly what's happening, so, so far so good. Except at this point, it would be useful to right-click the SF and track the creeps a little bit back because this position it's the worst position for the opposing mid laner if the creeps are being placed on the opposite high ground. So always if you have free moment right click the enemy hero. If you cannot see him you can always right click uh, enemy hero from another lane and just drive the creeps back. And this would make it way easier to last hit. This is actually... I'm noticing this pattern across a lot of lower MMR ranges. The people just either don't know how or forget to aggro the creeps constantly. But as a mid laner, you wanna aggro the creeps constantly to keep them, to always drag them into more favorable position. This Shadow of SF player is playing really passively, so so far it's going great for Storm. But against more aggressive SFs, you will want to keep your distance in fear of raises. Another problem for the lower MMR range players is that they are not constantly monitoring the health of the range creep. Like any time you're in the middle lane, your attention must be on a couple of things. Uh, the runes, enemy hero's position, enemy hero's health, and most importantly, the status of the creeps. Right, right, right here, the storm should know that his two creeps will start hitting the range creep, which means in about a few seconds, he will be in a deniable range which means Storm has to take the last hit before that happens, which should be easy with the overload. Instead, Storm wanders off somewhere and SF takes the last hit, then they deny. So yeah, that's something that should, mid player should be aware of, the constant state of the lane creeps. Uh, 
Again, the waves are meeting on the enemy high ground, which is very unfavorable for Storm, so what, what ideally the player should do is drag the creeps back, again. If the creeps are dragged back, uh, then the player, any player, can just save man on last hits, because the enemy hero is too far away to even threaten a deny. So again, always, always abuse the creep aggro. There is absolutely no reason that the player should be he heading back. Because we're just giving away a free ranged creep. Yeah, SF at most will stack two raises on you if you're afraid of the raises. But still, the trade, two raises for a range creep is a good one for you. And experience the gold. It's worth it, so. In cases like this, you should always go up to the high ground, prep a, an overloaded hit, and take the creep. Losing too many range creeps is how players lose lanes. And yes, I was already ahead on the XP scale. Both, both, of, both of these players play very passively. Also, I'm not sure if the player is following my own guide uh, for the items, but uh, generally the Null Talisman upgrade is a thing you'll want to do way later. First things you want, first, first you want a bottle, and then most of the time you'll want boots for faster rune con con contest for stacking jungle. If you're dominating the lane and the opponent doesn't want to show, then you can skip boots and then go for the region immediately, but usually it's the battle boots and then a null upgrade. Because right now Storm has like all of the region and none of the need to use it, because SF was super passive. So as a player, if you're reading the lane, if you're seeing the player, enemy player, not actually doing anything to you, then you don't need that much region in advance. You can plan your movements. You can play more aggressively, you can use your own region to trade his region, and then get a bottle. This is an out-trading of resources. That's the concept. Okay, stacking, that's good. This situation is very dangerous. Uh, let's break it down. The most Storm would have done in this case is attempted a deny on the melee creep. And that, that, that attempt itself, is it even worth it? Uh, there's a 25% chance you might miss. Uh, SF naturally has higher base damage, so uh, with all even odds he should be able to get a last hit anyway. And the worst case scenario, as you're heading back, a competent SF would just double raise you, which means you have just traded a very poor attempt for a last hit into losing like 300 health. In these kind of situations, sometimes you gotta think in advance and decide if it's worth it. In this case it wasn't. If the enemy player is not threatening a deny on you, always attempt a normal last hit. As that is too far, you can just right click this creep and get a, and get a and the last hit secured. The 
both players misplayed here. Let's break it down again. So what happens is Storm sees an opportunity for a Vortex combo, which is all good in itself. But then there is like no follow-up whatsoever. The combo itself is done, and then Storm just runs away into what? Into eating two raises. And if SF was competent, he would he would have casted these two raises. He has enough mana. And Storm would have mm, have been left with I think 100 HP, if my math is correct. So yeah, Storm engaged for nothing and SF missed a kill opportunity. Uh, in situations like these, if when Storm against SF, if you wanna uh, go aggressive with a Vortex combo, you will want to do it after SF has used some raises for a last hit. So first, you must threaten a last hit on the range creep to force SF to use it. And then uh, SF with the two races, he's not gonna outtrade you with the Vortex combo. So you can do the combo and then run him down. And then self back up and repeat the process. Most likely SF will have wasted all his mana, most of his health, and will be more cautious laning, which is good for you. That's, that's laning space. So it's minute 4 and only now Storm is getting battle. Ideally the battle should be should be delivered between minute 1 and 2. So that is extremely late. In moments like these when the enemy mid laner is gone, in this case to take the rune, what you can do is drag the creeps to the small camp. And this way you have just doubled your farm. Just a quick tip. And let's take a moment to talk about the skill build. Against the Seth, Storm has skill potential at level 6, so it makes no sense to skill remnants, because you will not want to stay in the jungle, you will want to threaten a kill on the SF, which means you'll want to uh, take shots at, at his uh, health pool with the overload, prep him down, and once he hits, uh, once he hit level 6, SF should be low and most likely die. So against uh, SF, against Sniper, against Zeus, you'll want to prioritize overload over Remnant. And uh, about the wand, I myself, I don't buy wand often, but if I do, if and if you do, you'll want to get wand a little bit earlier, probably if if the opposing mid laner is a bit passive, then you can get the wand after just a bottle, uh, and in normal lanes you can get the wand after a bottle and uh, boots. This way you can start getting stacks and have at least 10 by the time you're 6th and ready to dive the opposing mid laner. The SF is playing pretty carelessly, look he, he has like 66% health, which in most cases with a maxed overload should mean he should be dead if Storm would decide to engage, especially with the arcane rune. I mean, right here, right now, SF should be dead. He's out of position. But Storm was reluctant and did not engage. That's a, that's, that's a missed opportunity to kill SF. If you think you will not be able to kill SF, you should still take a shot. You should at least zip, do a Vortex combo. Because this will damage SF a lot and he will be forced to either retreat or play more passively. And if he does nothing, the next time the Vortex is off cooldown, he should be dead.
as a storm, as a, a hero with insane kill potential, you should not play passively. You should always be prepping a kill on the mid lane that you can actually kill. SF, Ember, Lina, Zeus. Well, Ember not so much, but the rest of them checks out. The only the only time you should be rotating Lena Jungle is it's against heroes. You you, can, you really cannot kill, or is it way too risky? Like Clinks, uh, maybe Walker. And let's take this moment to remind everyone watching that, as a mid laner, Division on the Runes is our top priority. When the wards are free, just buy a ward, place it, and always secure your runes. Well, okay, I think we're not gonna learn anything else from the, from the laning stage, let's skip forward a bit. SF is leading Storm on farm, which absolutely shouldn't happen when Storm can just kill SF at any moment. This passivity, that's not a word, but still, playing this passive just when you have the advantage over the mid laner is, some, is, more, is frequently the reason that uh, games are lost. Because when you have kill potential, when you uh, when you can actually shut down the enemy mid from farming and you don't do so That's less farm for you more farm for them. That's a negative space equilibrium And again the storm saw SF and just turned back when the logical thing to do would have been to jump him Not necessarily the dedicate the mana pool to him, but jump vortex combo head back SF will lose half of his HP Yes, I think it will be the biggest uh, impact, negative impact for this match. If it's if it's lost, I don't remember if it's lost. But if it is, that's most likely why. One of the factors, at least. I think I had a game versus Shadow Friend recently. Let's let's load it up so I can give you a visual example how Storm vs SF once the kill potential is achieved can be played. Just a second. There we go. All right, let's see. Ignore this one. I was stupid and ate a triple raise. Radiance 
Now I'm level 7, I'm skilling Vortex for the first time, I didn't have Vortex before, it was a misplay by me, and now I'm actively looking for a Seth to kill, because I know I have kill potential on him, and I can hunt him down anywhere. I place a ward, so I can actually see if he rotates to the mid lane, and, and I think he just showed. Yep, there we go. As soon as he shows, he's dead. He didn't die in this case, because uh, the trend has rotated. He just profit. But I did prep him for a kill with the previous engagement, so it was easy to finish him off. And yeah, like I said, anytime time SF shows to the lane, I will I will either kill him or wound him really badly. You just don't give a self a free moment to farm, you always threaten a kill on him. There we go. I'm just gonna hunt him across the map. Well, you get the idea. Let's get back to the one. Yeah, previous replay. So yeah, because SF was given free farm, he will dominate in the network scale. And while Storm, it's, Storm himself also free farmed, I mean the Orchid timing looks okay to me, it was at the cost of the mid laner, enemy mid laner being fat as well. Well, okay, I think I've said everything I could about the Leaning versus Shadow Friend. Let's uh, move on to the mid game. And because this is so fat, they can just afford to five men and take the mid tower down. Alright, with the Orchid now, the Storm can kill anyone on the map, so that's good. Of course, that someone should be ideally a core and an auto support. But yeah, a kill is better than no kill. From this point on, the Storm with the team should place offensive wards, because Storm can do pickups, Lion can just walk with Storm and help with the uh, disables. So from this point, from this point onwards, storms should just uh, hang around the enemy jungle looking for a sep to kill. Oh, SF and Shadow Blade. Okay, that's even better. Uh, SF with Yules against Storm against an Orchid Rush is actually a pretty good counter because Storm needs to rush Yules himself for the dodging of the ultimate. But SF with the Shadow Blade is actually free kill. Storm can just buy the dust and kill him any time.
if you're not hunting for kills, then the next best thing is to uh, threaten towers with the orchid. Which is what's happening here, so that's good. There's the SF. No, that jump was a bit unnecessary, I think. In these cases, you should you should like uh, I, I would like to say no. Let's use the term no, because at this MMR range you should be pretty familiar with the teammate hero skill sets. So you should know that the Oracle will be able to finish the Phoenix off, which exactly what happens. So wasting the rest of your mana pool just to secure a kill. It's a massive misplay. Which ends up costing him Storm his life, I think. Yeah. Well, that was nice. And the good thing about this particular match is at this point of the game, neither team is currently ahead and both team fights can swing in either favor. And for a storm with For a storm with Orchid, that's that's really good. If neither team is walking down towers, this means uh, the enemy team will be scattered around the map, which makes for easy pickoffs. But again, you, you will want to have good vision to do that. Middle tower is under attack. As a mid player, again, I will say, the wards are free. If you know where you want vision, just buy the wards and place them yourself. That's the best thing you can do as a mid laner, as a ganking snowballing mid laner. Just place some vision where you, you would see paths the enemy heroes take. Traversing the jungle and hunt the heroes down. And playing this passively with an orchid, that's a that's a no. That's a no no. That's again the same mistake. If you see Magnus using the RP, you, you should know that uh, Magnus and Lion, with their skill set, they should be able to bring SF down. You don't need to stay here, eat invoker spells just to help the kill. You should head back a bit, where invoker is no longer a threat, and observe from afar. This way you will save mana. And you can re-engage any time if you see as you see fit. But now AMP was eaten and yeah that's this this death was completely avoidable.
Okay, so if you see an egg, Phoenix egg, and you don't have BKB to block the damage at least, the last thing you want to do is engage, because the stun is a lot, and that's plenty of time for the enemies to follow up. If you know that your team will help you take the egg down, sure, go ahead. But again, let's read the map. Uh, let's read the uh, status of the heroes. Let's t let's take in mind their skill sets, and you know that clock will most likely disable you. Magnus does not hit very fast. Oracle does not hit very fast. It is unlikely that three of you will be able to take to take down the egg. The right play here is to wait the egg out. So what happened is you jumped right into the stun. As a storm, you will want to avoid all the easily avoidable disables, and the egg is one of them. And this is the fight where the game turns away from being a stalemate into full 7k advantage for the Radiant team. Forcing Storm to play from behind. And playing from behind, you'll want to conserve your mana as much as possible. Also playing from behind, you must adjust your item build to start getting defensives. The Bloodstone here is not gonna do you much, much good when the enemy can just focus you down with their, with their 10k gold advantage, which also means item advantage. You'll see some stuff, BKBs. The Bloodstone will do nothing in this case. Yule's BKB is the correct optimization when the enemy team is having an advantage. The Rushing Bloodstone made sense 10 minutes ago. It does not make sense now. You must always reevaluate your item choices. Boy, 20k advantage. Yeah, the bloodstone will do nothing. I mean, th the fact that you will need to spend 20 minutes just to finish an item should be a good enough hint that the item is not correct. Okay, so let's summarize the major massive mistakes. The first one is not pressing advantage against the opposing mid laner, so that's wasted space. Uh, second misplay is being way too passive when you have the item advantage to, uh, through an orchid. And the third mistake was not building defensively when the enemy team took over the lead. And those three combined were part of the reason the match was lost. And that's where we will end today's session. Good luck!